how easy it is to start, and it has a trembler coil to start it. It has no starter motor, so you swing the handle and you can get it to the right position and the cylinder is the right position. You press the top of this button here, and that's a trembler coil, it sends a shower of sparks to the cylinder that's ready to go, and it just starts. It's like magic. The Fairness M6 has been a passion of mine since I was a child. My father gave me a small book which had a picture of the car in it, and I was about 15, 18 years ago. I was told about the chassis had survived, and it was an obsession for, for 10 or 12 years, finding all the components and restoring the car. And it, I never had any doubt it would be a fabulous road car. There's a lovely article in 1911 when one of the works Fiat drivers drove it on the road. He said it was nice to drive the new 12 horsepower family saloon. The more I use it, the more enjoyable it is. And the, when uh, Goodwood arranged this race, last year I felt I wasn't quite brave enough. And this year I thought, well, it's going a lot better and it's about time we see what it's like on the track. just running or moving, just moving, is so much more emotive than seeing a car sitting in a museum. And it's, it, I've driven it faster this weekend than I ever have. Uh, the brakes are working well. I think it's good for the car. The car's running beautifully. I just think it just, it, it just loves it. The car loves it and it's been really exciting. It's not easy. It's a bit like wrestling a big hairy gorilla most of the time. Preparing for racing wasn't really a lot, I wasn't quite sure what to do, so all, <laughs> all I did was tighten up the shock absorbers. Shock absorbers are the things that try and make the thing not fall over. Uh, tighten up the shock absorbers. I blew the tyres up to 100 psi because I thought, well, I don't want the tyres coming off. And I wandered around checking it. That's about all. There's not much you can do. There's not much you can do. And I, it's all a bit of a step into the unknown, a little bit. The straight bits are fine. It's, it's just knowing how much you can break, how early you need to break, how, you, you just don't want to go into a corner too fast because there's not much you can do if you end up going too fast. So it's, it's really just making sure the tyres stay on and the car doesn't fall over. That's what we can do. Duncan in the Fiat. That's four litres of 28, uh, four cylinders, 28, 28 litre, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They're much better than I thought, much faster than I thought. Uh, the brakes, I gave the brakes a bit of a pasting. Uh, but we were doing over 100 miles now on the Levant straight and the car's not light and it's only got two wheel brakes and pulling on the handbrake was a bit of a strain. Goodwood has tried to, so tried to spice it up a little bit this year and last year by introducing this early class for pre-1923. At Brooklyn's, just after the First World War, a whole gaggle of peculiar cars appeared and there were Edwardian cars before the first war with aeroplane engines in, old land speed record cars, little cycle cars, and they all raced in Brooklyn as a, as a fairest handicap races, and it was always the big guy against the small guy, and they dragged out these big old cars from, from sheds that were stashed away before the first war. And they're so good to try to recreate that. They're into the SF Edge trophy, <laughs> which last year was one of the highlights of the meeting. Very much so. Everyone was expecting a rather slow speed parade from these old cars, but in fact, they were incredibly competitive and they incredibly were. quick. cars, we're never quite sure what's going to happen, but the only problem is the clutch, which may need a, a, a pit lane start, but it'll be fine. I'm not thinking about results. I, I'm really pleased to be as far up the grid as I am. I, I, I thought it'd be so slow in the corners that I'd be at that class, so I'm really pleased about halfway up the grid. Somebody told me that I'm only one mile an hour slower across the start-finish line than Patrick is in the little VHEM, who's on pole. So it's fast enough on the straight bits. So we'll do the warming up lap, but if I can't get it into gear, from stationary, I'm going to have to start with a little bit of push in the pit lane. So I'll probably get the back for the race. And if I can claw back half the field, I'll be delighted. Absolutely delighted.
away quite slowly. He's been gobbled up. Mark Walker was rocketed past him on the uh, uh, right-hand side. Mark Walker's ahead going up to uh, Ward's Madgwick. But uh, here comes the Fiat. The Beast of Turin comes out. over as low as he can be but then the grunt of the Delage will pay off and Silensky is he doing he's waving to the pit wall two cylinders versus 12 a quarter of an hour remaining until the checkered flag comes out the S76 Fiat banging along with Duncan Pittaway on board down he's, in 14th uh, he's, place. Yep. he's gaining positions and still flaming just to entertain the fans but it, it's not easy it's quite exhausting try best bit was going slowly around the corners because of the size and the height. Having a smaller car coming past me on the inside and then blasting past me on the straight. That was very, very satisfying. This is good. If people have a little speedboat, put a, a very big engine on a speedboat, and it's really dangerous, not dangerous, it's really scary because the engine dominates the boat. And the thing about this thing, the engine's so big that if it as much as coughs, the whole car shakes. Good to see the field still going strong. Yeah, running well in 12th place. Duncan using third and fourth gears only. Having rushed up to the rear of the Delage, Patrick's slipping back a little bit. Well, that's on the straights. Once he gets the corners, this part of the circuit, he should now pull it back in through Woodcut. But uh, certainly down the straights, the V12 Delage is mighty for Matthias Zaleski. He's been slightly delayed, though. Is this an opportunity for a better exit by the GN Curtis? But then the acceleration, clearly on the Delage, he won't pick up immediately, but once he gets that, gets it really spinning on the start finish straight, he should open out, and so he does. Oh, wow. He's on the inside, but uh, over and out, I think. Make it, is he? Fantastic. It's going to be a good. dead heat. Is he going to duck out of the slipstream? stream? No, he can't get there. And uh, that what a fabulous race. If you miss a gear, it's really difficult to back, back again. So you just have to bide your time, get your thoughts together, get into gear. But by the time you, you miss, you know, you've lost a bit of traffic. So it's a shame, really, because I felt I could have beaten the Benz to the finish. But not away. Terrifying. <laughs> it was terrifying. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Yeah, yeah, great. I caught Marcus, but I couldn't get past him. And what, just did, did you start on the, on the pit lane? Pit lane, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, it was good, but I caught low, past loads of people. It was good fun. Past loads of people. I caught Marcus, which is fab. Yeah, good, yeah. But I couldn't pass him. You know, he was fast on the straights, but I couldn't. Just yeah. was, there was too much traffic, so it was good. All right, well done. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Absolutely yeah, fabulous. Well, it's fabulous now. You look, you're going really quickly. Yeah. You look like you were really, I mean, you were motoring a lot. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. Looks like it. The worrying thing is, is, it's not going quickly is easy. It's just knowing you can stop. That's all. Yeah. Just fantastic. Just, I'm just glad it's, glad it was only 20 minutes. It seemed like about two hours. I woke up at about three o'clock this morning thinking how fast I was going down the back straight and how much I'm relying on two little brakes on the back. And if the brakes didn't come on or you heard a, a boinging noise just as you got to, towards the corner, what the hell do you do? Do you bail out? Do you, I don't know what do you do. I, know, I woke up in a bit of a cold sweat this morning thinking about that. And then once we got on the way, I forgot about that. So it just carried on. So just, fine. Good. Nice it for another year. <laughs> 